So I must be a criminal. Anybody who deposits that kind of cash must be a criminal, and they must be stopped. And the answer was, yeah, it's more probably a move to digital currency. Now this is, this is a banker. And I said, um, okay, well, if we don't have any cash, and um, you know, a central government computer is doing everybody's transactions, what do we need banks for? Didn't answer. The worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. We're now down 43%. This could be the most serious recession in decades. Protect your retirement with a gold and silver IRA. Learn more at sdbullion.com slash IRA. I've asked Tim to join me in studio to talk about something that just uh, just recently went down. In fact, today when I went into your, <clears throat> yeah. your shop, you're like, Yankee? We need to talk and we need to do it live. So I need to come in to your studio. You, you received a notice in the mail and uh, we're going to review that notice. I want to ask you what happened. I'm going to ask you why you think it happened. And then we're going to get into the meaning of it. I want you to go through this letter. In fact, I'm going to put it up on the screen so people can follow along as you sure, read it. That's fine. Does that sound good? Yeah. You know, I deposited a lot of cash. I mean, you know, some right. times very large amounts of cash mm -hmm. and um in a world that we don't know anything about you know that um <clears throat> collusion between the banking community and the government um they have things called suspicious activity reports sars um yeah and if i if i deposit uh, or if somebody listen for back up if somebody brings ten thousand dollars of cash into my store and they're buying gold with it mm -hmm. uh or silver um they would have to fill out the 8300 paperwork. And anybody who's curious can go look at Form 8300 IRS. And it is a detail of all your information and the store that accepted all this cash and exactly what the cash was. And, of course, you have to put the, the person who gave you the cash has put his Social Security number down, et cetera. Mm -hmm. At one time, you had to put how many ones, fives, tens, twenties, you know, but that's, they don't mm. do that anymore. Okay. Because um, people, most people just say, oh, I think it was all hundreds. <laughs> um, but every time I go to the bank with $10,000 or more in cash, whatever entry they make in the computer mm -hmm. is kind of like a suspicious activity report or an 80, form 8300 because I'm depositing more than $10,000. I think at one time I've given them $100,000 and um, many times given them $50,000 or around that amount. All these deposits I've been making mm -hmm. <clears throat> have been generating some sort of report and it goes to the IRS. It's done you know, right on my account on the computer. This particular bank doesn't care that I'm one of their biggest depositors. They don't care. Uh, How long have you been with them? Oh, uh, let's see. I opened up this account 46 years ago. Oh, my word. And I was, that's long before TD Bank came oh to God. New Hampshire. Did you say TD Bank? I did. Yeah. Well, that's the fellow who signed the, the letter. His <laughs> name, it said, sincerely, Mr. TD Bank. I, I think he must be an official with the bank. Oh, oh, maybe man. that's just maybe this just is a form letter I got from the bank. You think? Maybe yeah, I think it's just a form letter, and it's very nice. It's a, it's actually you know, it's really warm and understanding. Actually, would you read it for us and maybe even comment as you see fit as you go through it? Well, it's it's written to me. It says, "Dear customer, uh, we appreciate the importance <laughs> of keeping you informed when it comes to your banking." On an ongoing basis, TD reviews all of its customer relationships as part of our approach to managing our business. As a result of a recently conducted review, we have determined that we can no longer continue to support your existing accounts and or services. We have considered this matter very carefully and our decision was not arrived at lightly. Really? <laughs> Take that with a grain of salt. Um, and then it says, another nice way of putting it, your TD account, uh, bank accounts will be closed on March 4th, 2024. 
30 okay. days from the date of this notice. So much for the nice niceties yeah, yeah, and pleasantries. Really, really nice. Yeah. And it says here, for information about our right to close accounts at our discretion, please refer you to, to your, we refer you to your TD Bank account business deposit account agreements. Ooh. And I just looked at them and it says, um, you 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 checked it out? Yeah, because it says you know for information about our right to close these accounts at our discretion, blah blah. So I went there and basically it says <clears throat> we reserve the right to close accounts at our discretion. <laughs> that was a good explanation. Uh, that, that that's kind of the meat of the whole story, yeah. And it says outlined below is a list of your accounts. There's actually three of them, but they they missed one. They missed one. Yeah, they they uh, I have their credit card service. He Soon missed be, the credit card yeah. service. I think I'll be moving that to another bank. Somebody who appreciates the business. You may close your deposit accounts before the close date by presenting this letter at any TD Bank location. At that time, we will present you with a check for any account balances. I was considering, you know, maybe getting together a few key sales in the business to um, the wholesalers. And then uh, giving them a really big check to give me. I haven't, I haven't figured out the, the details of that because I only have until the 26th of February to stop making deposits. Is that, is that what it said? Yeah. The 26th. It said um, recommend that I don't make any deposits mm -hmm. after February 26th. So if you have any questions, please call this non existent number that nobody <laughs> answers. Tim, I've been seeing this happen starting last year to local coin shop dealers. I watched a few videos on YouTube. Uh, I bet a lot of people out there have uh, seen uh, some of these. They're getting the same type of letters. A lot of more small regional banks. This is TD Bank. Yeah, and it, nobody wants to do any real investigation. That's the problem with it. Um, because I, I, I said before, and I'll say again, I have, for every dime that's spent in my store, I have receipt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And customers will say, yeah, I don't want a receipt. So I take a piece of paper. It looks like one of my receipts. And I put down what was sold mm -hmm. and what the cost right. was. The IRS is single-minded. And the reason we know that is because the Secretary of the Treasury, when quizzed on why did you choose $600 to open up everybody's account to the IRS? And her answer was, we chose $600 to catch those high income tax cheats. Okay? So if you have $600 in your account, according to Janet Yellen, you are a high income tax cheat. But they are single minded. They all they see is the number of reports, the mm -hmm. number of reports relating to how much cash I was depositing. Mm -hmm. So I must be a criminal. Anybody who deposits that kind of cash must be a criminal, and they must be stopped. Did you see this coming? Yeah, about a year ago. About a year ago. Did you have a conversation with someone about this? I, well, I did. Uh, I don't want to mention any names, but... Uh, I've had several conversations with the local branch manager, and um, I have to admit, one of them has been actually both of both of the local branch managers have been very sympathetic. They think um, robbing me of part of my income is absolutely wrong uh, because I've been paying for the privilege of depositing cash in this bank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, last June, the cash deposit fee was $1,725. In July, it was $1,650. In August, it was $1,675. Okay, that's out of my profits. Okay, now when you make, um, and the, the basis that now for these uh, cash deposit fees is 30 basis points. So our average at the end of the year profit on a gold coin is 1.5%. With the cash deposit fee, that reduces my profit from 1.5% to 1.2%. And nobody can operate a business on 1.2%. That's worse than any other business going. But they take that out of my deposits for the, because of the penalty for depositing cash. It's foolish. This, again, 
TD Bank, big <clears throat> Canadian bank. It, it harkens back to what happened, Tim, two years ago this month up in Canada, the Canadian trucker protests yep. and what they did to their accounts 20 years ago. When you were my age, this wasn't a, a thought. No. It never no. crossed your mind that this could happen. Yeah. So what's going on? Um, well, Canada is well on the way to a digital currency. Uh, if you, you, you know, have a vacation in Montreal, I, I suspect you won't be able to spend cash anywhere. Um, you know, last time we were up there, it was kind of shocking. Mm -hmm. We go up there for the Grand Prix every year. Mm -hmm. To get to the track, you have to take the metro, uh, card only. You get to the track and you want to get a bottle of water, maybe a beer, a hot dog, a Dagwood sandwich, which are great. Um, <laughs> they don't take cash. Nobody took cash up there. The first thing we do when we go to Canada is I take all the Canadian currency I have, convert it to modern currency, and that's what you used to spend. We didn't right. spend none, any of it, any of the paper currency. We didn't it's, spend any of it. It's coming here, Tim. They can couch this in risk, money laundering, and everything else. They can say, well, you know, it's just not worth getting headlines we don't want. Oh, it, it's I, not I, that. It's not that. Yeah, yeah, That's an excuse. You know, not to give them a bad rap in the, in the news. Hmm. I think everybody should tell 100 people of your customers about TD Bank. Yes. <laughs> it's not just TD no, Bank. it's all of them. It's all of them. Yeah. It is. It's but spreading. The, the, I asked a few questions. I said, is this... Uh, something that comes from Congress, and his answer was not uh, not precise. I mean, because all the things they're allowed to do come from Congress, okay? Um, and I said, is it um, more because it's the amount of cash and the somebody like the IRS is very suspicious, or is, you think it's part of a move to a digital currency? And the answer was, yeah, it's more probably a move to a digital currency. Now, this is, this is a banker. And um, th there's, there's so many things wrong with that answer. Um, and I asked the question, I said, what are, how many banks are there in this country? 10,000, 15,000? He said, yeah, about that. And I said, um, okay, well, if we don't have any cash, and um, you know, a central government computer is doing everybody's transactions. What do we need banks for? Didn't answer. And I said, you know, hmm. I don't see any reason to have any banks. So are we going to take um, 10,000 banks and just close them? We've already heard that the UAW is going to lose about 500,000 workers because of this mandatory move to electric cars uh, because most of these workers are not um, qualified to do jobs on electric cars. Uh, so th that's going to throw, what, 500,000 UAW workers back on the job market? And there have to be a similar number of bankers, of people working for mm -hmm. banks in this country. Mm -hmm. So are you guys fighting this? And it was like silence. Wow. I mean, Wow. Why are they not fighting it? Because the fact is, they can't go like that to a digital currency mm -hmm. and take away the cash. It would cause too much disruption right. everywhere. It's going to be done gradually. Absolutely. I have worked at a bank for a little while. Don't hold it against me, Tim. But um, Not as a banker, but in IT. And I remember two things that really uh, stood out uh, with me. One is that when I spoke with the bank president, he said to me, um, this whole business is a confidence game, Yankee. If we lose confidence, it's over. It's a well, con well, game. And he said, if that happened, within two hours, all the ATMs would be emptied out. That is absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. And the run in the banks has already started. Mm. I mean, everybody I talk to uh, mm -hmm. is telling me, yes, I... I sold a piece of real estate, I've got this extra money, and I don't want to put it in the bank. But back in the 1930s, only a select few people had bank accounts. Mm -hmm. okay? And when they went to the bank to get their money out, um, they were definitely not going to accept a check, which is what 
they're offering me a check, okay? <laughs> um, they're they're going to get their money back in cash. Mm. I think that on today's scale is probably a million Mind, times. Mind-boggling, yep. There, there isn't that much cash in the world to pay these people if they start a run on the banks. Um, but you take away the faith in the banks. Uh, they've already taken away faith in the government because, as we all know, we have a government that lies to us about everything, absolutely everything. It challenged me on that, and I'll mm-hmm. tell you what the, what the truth is mm-hmm. uh, on any point. I learned just how powerful the risk manager, director, risk control officer, whatever you want to call it, in a bank was. Their word was law. Even to the president, if they looked at something and said, nope, cancel, close that account, we're not dealing with it, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do this. Now, there are times when they needed to, but what has happened, I think, is not only has that role grown, but it's coming from a lot higher up maybe as far as as high as the Fed itself, but at least with member banks, there are powers that are looking down and saying, we are not going to be in the business of doing this. This Tim Marshner, that type, we're done. This is the process. We're going to close the accounts. I asked at one point to uh, one of the few friends, friendly people at the bank, um, who deposits more cash? Me or Shaw's? And then he said, you probably do. Okay. I said, me or Hannaford's? Uh, he said, well, yeah, you probably do. Do they pay this fee? He said, no, well, they, they have a contract with the bank. I said, Ooh. well, can I get a contract <laughs> with the bank? And the answer was ultimately no. I'd love to know what that contract specifies. Well, it's probably a corporate contract, mm. you know, which um, because the poor markets make so little profit. That you know, we can't be stealing that from unlike a big local coin shop dealer like you making a one man jo- shop. Yeah, <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to pursue um, moving my business accounts to uh, one or two other banks. I open up this account with a bank called Merchant Savings Bank. Okay. And uh, they, in a few years, became a bank called Numerica. They, Numerica and Merchant Savings had merged, and so the name be- became Numerica. Um, and I think it was 1991, all the banks were on the verge of failure. failure. So, um, and you know, coincidentally, that was after Glass-Steagall was repealed, by the way. Hmm. Coincidence? Um, coincident. I, I, yeah, think I think not. it's coincidental. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But so those two banks became um, New Dartmouth. And New Dartmouth was made up of six or eight banks that had failed. Uh, New Dartmouth was taken over by Shawmut, big Boston bank. Shawmut was taken over by Fleet, which is a bigger Rhode Island bank. Okay, And then Fleet became Bank of America. When they became Bank of America, uh, they realized they had two branches of Bank of America within a block and a half, okay? So they sold my account. They didn't ask me anything about this. They sold my account to First National Bank of Portsmouth. That bank was acquired by People's Heritage Trust from Maine. People's Heritage Trust had also acquired Bank of New Hampshire. So they transferred my account from People's Heritage Trust to Bank of New Hampshire. Bank of New Hampshire was acquired by a company called Bank North, which was acquired by TD Bank. I've been with the same bank for 46 years. Um, as far as they're concerned, uh, well, you're just, that teller probably joined the bank, bank last week. You're just so the number. They don't know. Yeah, you're just they the don't number know. now. Have you considered a credit union? Yeah, I I have credit union accounts. Okay. And I I haven't talked to them, but I do have a reason to talk to them. Okay, good. And um what are you going to do with that piece of paper? Um you have a uh, discussion that needs to be had? I I'm going to highlight the parts that I need to pay attention to like February 26th <laughs> and May 4th. Yeah. And I I think probably the best thing for me to do cuz I want them to write me a big check is to put a lot more money in that bank. 
we got to fight for our right to use cash. Keep Everybody using is. it. Everybody, Everybody needs to do this because what happened to you could happen to me and others. People should not be shy about taking their money out of a bank. If you, if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's a 401k or, or IRA or whatever it is, if you want your money out of the bank, go to the bank and tell them. You can say, mm -hmm. I want cash and I want it as soon as I can get it because I'm not sure your bank's going to be here tomorrow. Wise words. And that's that's be the bank i call it be listen, the I, bank i said when i'm on the phone to the wholesaler ordering something i see the the bank transfer go right through and <laughs> i said what you guys don't trust the banks either and he said no, why should we oh, thank you for sharing that tim i really appreciate it and uh, i know those watching right now really appreciate it if you do please down in the comments of this video uh let let tim know what you think 